Hello, everyone, and welcome to video number two, Bloom's Taxonomy Action Verbs. In this video, we are going to learn the verbs that are associated with each level of Bloom's Taxonomy. And again, if at any time you need uh, clarification or further assistance, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. So here are the action verbs that we associate with the knowledge level. And again, if you are using the handout, um, you could either type directly into the handout or just pause this video and handwrite them into your handout. For knowledge, we have define, identify, label, list, locate, match, memorize, name, recall, spell, fill in the blank, state, tell, underline. Because remember, at the knowledge level, this is just basic regurgitation of, of facts, regurgitation of information, identifying it as something that I have seen before. At the comprehension level, explain, convert, Describe, interpret, paraphrase, put in order, restate, retell in your own words, rewrite, summarize, trace, translate. So for comprehension, again, that's towards the bottom of the pyramid. Those words uh, are all words that we would use to describe a student who has seen this before, recognizes it, and understands what you want them to do with it. Um, so we consider knowledge and comprehension to be at the bottom of the pyramid. And if at any time I'm going through this too quickly, the beauty of this situation is you can just hit that pause button. Okay, for application, we have apply, makes sense. Compute, conclude, demonstrate, determine, draw, find out, give an example, operate, show, solve, and use. So when we get into application and analysis, we're getting more into the middle of those mid-level mid thinking skills. That means that we've got our foundation under our belt, and now we're taking that information and we're putting it into novel scenarios where um, ramping things up a notch. And so here's analysis. Obviously, you have analyze, categorize, classify, compare and contrast, debate, deduct, diagnose, diagram, differentiate, dissect, distinguish, examine, infer, and specify. So in the analysis level, the students are able to break the information, break the topic up into its parts, uh, look at all those parts to, to make the whole, um, look at how the inter intertwining parts interact with each other. All of those are analysis level skills. So application and analysis are in the middle of the pyramid. For synthesis and evaluation, now we're at the top. So for synthesis, meaning create, construct, create, design, develop, formulate, generate, invent, make, originate, plan, produce, propose. So at the synthesis level, you're asking the student to make something, design an experiment, write a poem, draft a constitution. All of these are things that the student makes. And that's why those are higher order thinking skills because they require all of the levels below them in order to produce that product. And then finally, evaluation is like grading. So when you're grading student work, you're at the top of the pyramid. And when your students are grading each other, or even if you just give them a novel piece of um, you know, a novel journal article and say, evaluate this, right? That's the same thing. Assess, appraise, defend, evaluate, judge, justify, grade, support. And usually you as the educator would have to give them the criteria that they should use. But um, again, they can also use the criteria that you've taught them all the way through this process of building to the top of the pyramid. So when to use each Bloom's level? Well, if you want your students to just have basic information, write an objective at the knowledge level. If you want your students to demonstrate their understanding, that's where comprehension comes in. If you want your students to use that information in a new situation, that's called transfer, um, use application. If you want to show that your students can see the parts of a relationship, that's analysis. If you want your students to create an original work, doesn't matter what that original work is. If you want students to make something new and novel all on their own, that's synthesis. And then if you want your students to judge, defend, um, grade, all of those are evaluation level skills. 
And so a note about instructional objectives, they are always clear, concise, and specific, and they only address one topic at a time. So here's a good instructional objective. The student will be able to diagram a sentence with 100% accuracy. Okay, so we've got the student will be able to, the action verb is diagram, and what are we diagramming? We're diagramming a sentence, and I want them to do it with 100% accuracy. It's clear, concise, to the point, one action verb, one topic. And again, if you don't want to put the accuracy level, that's optional. I always like to do it for myself, but it's not mandatory for you. Here's a bad instructional objective. The student will be able to diagram a sentence and explain the parts of speech with 100% accuracy. Well, now we've got too much going on. Okay, because the purpose of an instructional objective is that it's measurable. That is the key word here, okay? If your instructional objective isn't measurable, then it's not a good objective. So for, for the good version, be able to diagram a sentence with 100% accuracy, well, that would be super easy for me to um, assess. You know, I just give them a homework assignment or I put an example up on the board or the screen and say, here, diagram this sentence. That's a very measurable um, instructional objective because there's only one topic. But in the bad version, diagram a sentence and explain the parts of speech. Okay, we've got two verbs, diagram and explain. We've got two topics, the sentence and the parts of speech. So your student might do well on diagramming the sentence, but not so well on explaining the parts of speech. So you would need to split that instructional objective into two to see um, where your students are able to do one part, but maybe not the other. And so an instructional objective that is well-written is clear, concise, very specific, only one topic. And then always ask yourself, is this measurable? Because if it isn't measurable, then it's no good. And so that's what we just talked about. How do we fix the bad one? We split it up into two and we, uh, that's basically what would solve the problem there if we just split that up into two. Okay, here's your quiz. For each of the instructional objectives that I give you, you're gonna decide which Bloom's taxonomy level the um, instructional objective is written. And it doesn't matter if these are all topics that you don't know. Um, they're all ones that I've pulled from my domain, but you know what? All that matters is you wanna look at the action verbs and figure out which level of Bloom's taxonomy they are written. So hit pause on your screen and try these on your own. Then when you're ready, just hit resume and I'll show you the answers. So if you've had enough time to try these on your own, let's go through the answers. Number one, the student will be able to define wave vocabulary with 100% accuracy. That's knowledge, it's just the definition. Number two, the student will be able to explain what causes a wave with 100% accuracy. That's comprehension. Number three, the student will be able to identify types of waves with 100% accuracy. That's knowledge, you're just regurgitating a fact. Number four, the student will be able to summarize the properties of waves with 100% accuracy. That's comprehension, see the difference there? Number five, the student will be able to compare and contrast waves with 100% accuracy. That's analysis, getting into some mid-level thinking. Number six, the student will be able to interpret data graphs with 100% accuracy. That's comprehension. Number seven, the student will be able to differentiate between frequency and wavelength with 100% accuracy. That's analysis. Number eight, the student will be able to demonstrate the relationship between frequency and energy with 100% accuracy. That's application, another mid-level skill. Number nine, the student will be able to design an earthquake-proof bridge with 100% accuracy. That's synthesis, asking the student to make something. And number 10, the student will be able to critique a bridge design with 100% accuracy. That one is evaluation. If you have any questions on how we came to these answers, please feel free to reach out to me. I hope that this video has been useful for you, and I hope that you have a great day. Bye.